All right. So here we have loading in on Star Station in the top right hand corner. XGS Gadget playing uh, in the three two position. So he is up. Uh, their team is up. X Gamers is up one game right now, and he's playing in the top right. In the bottom left hand corner, we have XC Boo Boo Boo. Uh, actually, I guess it'd be Boo Boo because there's an extra O in there. I guess I don't know. It's a very confusing name. Playing as the Red Terran in the bottom left on Star Station. So this is cross map TVT. Which is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, oh, now that I think about it, Star Station's only cross spawn. They changed that part way through the season. But uh, yeah, so cross map TVT should be pretty exciting. I haven't actually gotten Star Station in quite a while on the ladder. I think most players started downloading it after it became cross position uh, in fear of running into Zergs on it, I guess. Not sure. Um, but let's see what's actually going on. I'm going to throw that up there. And that up there, so that way everyone can see what's going on. Even though it kind of mildly clashes over each other up there in the top right, I'm gonna have to move those elements, which is going into uh, some word files, editing a little bit of code. But you know, I'll manage. We'll do that later. Uh, the raxes are going down. Nothing too exciting. Gas being started for gadget. It's the first differentiation. He did the 12 gas, which means that he is going to have his reaper out and across the map much sooner. And Reapers are really strong in this map for scouting because look how much surface area there is. It's ridiculous. It's the same reason drop play is great for everybody, but in particular like Nidus Worm or uh, like literally Mass Roach Drop or Swarm Host Drop is so great on this map, as well as, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think what's great for Protoss on this map. Oh, Blake Soccer. What am I kidding? Link Soccer all ins are great on this map for Protoss because of all this. They set up their defense down here, and you're like, um, no, I'm just going to walk into your main base. And versus Zerg, you just kind of snipe one or two things. And then versus, you know, like you, you snipe the spawning pool or the Roach Horn up here when you blink in, and then it just becomes GG. You can slowly overwhelm them. And then versus Terran, they really need bunkers with a lot of their economic builds to go lately to be able to stay alive. So you're going to deal a lot of damage and get a lot done if you blink in. But uh, neither Terran or Zerg are in this. Or I'm sorry, neither Protoss or Zerg are in this game. It's just a Terran versus Terran. But nothing's going to happen for a few minutes. So I had to occupy some time there somehow. Uh, moving across the map, Gadget's already kind of camped out over here. He saw that it was a full wall in here at the top of the ramp, which is pretty common. You don't actually want Hellions to be able to run by or anything like that, which, while not very common these days, was actually a really big deal in Terran vs. Terran and Wings of Liberty. Uh, Hellion run-bys were very powerful, so Terran players still have that mindset of walling off. Uh, also, they do have a Zerg all the time anyway, so it's just kind of in their brains. And we're going to have maybe Hellions over here out of Gadget. I would probably... All right, he's going to expand. We're going to have to see. If a Widow Mine comes out of this first, it'll be interesting. Uh, that's a much more defensive posture. In the meantime, Gadget working on some SCVs down here. He's going to get driven off by these two Marines, though. But he gets a good amount of scouting information. He sees that that command center is going down. Did he see that factory? He didn't see that factory. Uh, he doesn't know that there's a tech lab, so he's probably going to want to actually hop back up there and see what's going on at the front of the base. That's pretty important information to have. But you can kind of deduce things. You can see that there's not a second gas pretty important. That means it's probably not going to be Cloak Banshee play, which is a, a pretty common opening in TVT right now. Um, the Muslim uses it all the time, uh, as well as quite a few of the top Koreans. Uh, delayed Banshee timers are pretty strong too, though, so we'll have to see. But now he, sh he shoots up here. He does get picked off, but he sees that there's a swap going down. He didn't see an armory. He didn't see a second gas. So he's going to have to assume that's probably going to be uh, drops or bioplay off the bat. So we'll have to see how that moves in. Of course, Terran vs. Terran is the land of tanks. So tanks are starting up over here. And Gadget's build is looking super Wings of Liberty-ish right now. Nothing new being used. Not going into Widow Mines. Not going to go for Widow Mine drops. Nothing like that. A big scan going down here out of Ooh Boo Boo. And he's going to see that, you know, there's a Rax, there's a factory with a with a tech lab on it, which almost always 100% of the time indicates that siege tanks are being built. Because there's really no other reason for a factory to have a tech lab on it these days. 
And the players are going to be moving out to, you know, secure their expansions right now. And it looks like right now Gadget is just uh, SCVing in his base, but he's going to move down. Yeah, okay, now he starts moving down. And another Rax being thrown down. Tech Lab being thrown on this one, so he's going to start researching probably... It'll be interesting to see if he goes Stimmer Combat Shields. And then back here we have... Looks like it might be Mech Play out of Ubu. Ubu, Ubu. So that's pretty exciting. Hellions are moving out across the map right now. That's quite a lot of Hellions that probably should have indicated to me that it was mech play. But anyway, the second factory, and then the third one, being extremely observant, totally 100% solidified that's going to be mech play. Um, he's going to want to pick up the gases at his expansion, actually. Unless he's going to go two reactor, one tech lab, and go for some type of timing here soon. But to see. Now the thing about all these Hellions is he's going to have to research the transformation because they cannot be Hellbats. They're stuck as being Hellions right now. And if he pokes up and sees how many Marines there are and how spread out they are, that's a situation where you just want to kind of back up and then you're going to want to go ahead and save them and move them into Hellbats. You're probably not going to want to try and throw them away on a run-by. There are quite a few siege tanks up here on the high ground. Oop! Big tank shot going down. Hellions almost dying, but not quite. So let's see. Reactor Tough Lab. Okay. That's why I didn't pick up the gas. He's going to go really hellion heavy here off the bat. His first medvac is out on the field. And plus one should be. Yeah, there we go. Plus one started up here on that armory that just finished. Now the two refineries going down here at the natural. We'll probably see a factory, if not two more, going up here pretty shortly. And we have a drop down here in the back that didn't really deal a lot of damage. Uh, let's see. Oop, hold on. It killed a few workers. Not that big of a deal. He almost lost the medvac. It's at 13 HP right now. There are now turrets up all around the back of this. So he's going to be in a pretty easily defensible position as far as drop play goes now. High ends out here in the middle of the field. Just relaxing, not really doing too much. Siege tanks are so cool. Sorry, I'm enthralled by the spinning siege tank. This one's just hanging out, but that one was spinning. But yeah, there's not, there's not really much to, to commentate about at this exact moment, because really, they're just Ding up, right? They don't want to die to drops. Mech's really susceptible to drops in particular because of its immobility, so he's throwing up a bunch of turrets around here. He's probably going to want to start dropping them near his mineral lines, to be honest. Um, but, you know, a little bit of drop play going down on both sides. Pretty decent, actually, drop right there. Three more workers killed for two Hellbats and a Medvac, though. Probably not worth it. Um, I'm not really sure he even killed any Marines, so... It's pretty difficult to get really good drops going on when you fly into a missile turret, just because it, it puts a giant timer on that on that attack. So, uh, plus one did oh no plus one didn't finish. He's going for armor first. That's interesting. It's like a super defensive defensive posture. That's really weird. All right, there's a oh there's another where's that engineering bay? Oh, it's in the back. Okay, I was like whoa that's crazy. Um, but yeah, it still doesn't have combat shields on him, which is weird. When you see that many Hellbats, you're definitely going to want to pick up combat shields or move into Marauders very quickly. Second armory going down, plus two weapons starting. So plus one already finished here for our Mechink player in the bottom. And he is, of course, up in supply. He's blocked his siege tank in. He needs to go... Huh. I think he has to lift up the starport and the racks because there's only a one hex right here and a one hex right here. All right, so moving in for another drop, it looks like. Moving very sneaky-like. Yeah, those Hellbats get a few workers, but not really a whole lot. Not too much being done. Yeah, see, these siege tanks are just gonna keep piling up until you lift off. But yeah, there's a one hex here, one hex here, probably. I'm trying to think. That actually looks like a diagonal right there. Great. Alright, now it's time to see if there's hidden messages in the supply depots. 
Uh, no, doesn't look like it. They haven't spelt out anything offensive or drawn anything offensive. Which is, of course, not the way you're supposed to use supply depots. You're supposed to, of course, draw art with them. So when people watch the replays or are casting, they have something to watch. So keep that in mind, Terrence. Draw me symbols. I've seen, like, GL. Like, good luck. Stuff like that. Look at these siege tanks. They're so confused right now. They're like, we really want to be out there with those other siege tanks. We want to double your siege tank count. But, okay, yeah, they killed the turret. I probably just would have lifted the racks and the starport. Maybe just move the starport up here because who cares? It flies units out. Alright, so he's going to want to wait for all these tanks. Ooh, that's scary. Alright, so behind this, Obubu has picked up... Like, he's finished his next expansion. So he's going to be able to move out and take that, probably at the low ground next to his main base. Not near the watchtower. See, Shanks just getting lots of free shots here on these Hellbats. They are 2-1 though, and uh, the bio player's army is 1-1. He does have more Vikings out on the field right now, which is going to allow him to have total air control, because there's only one Viking out for him. Now he's going to start to be able to pick off these medvacs. So there's going to be a ton of vision advantage here for Gadget. Does manage to unload both of those, though. Another Viking coming across the field. It's just going to get picked off, though. Well, he does manage to kill a Viking before he dies. Oh, this guy actually got both of those Viking kills. Oh, no, he got a Viking kill and uh, probably the medvac. Alright, so drops coming down here from the bio player, which is what you want to be doing. When you're the bio player, you need to be dropping constantly and abuse the immobility of the mech player. The mech player needs to put up turrets, set up, you know, uh, stacked, lots of static defense in the form of turrets, and as well as uh, sensor towers, because you want to see where those drops are coming from. Now, this is a pretty big map, but if you put a sensor tower, like, right here, it's going to cover all the way through all that dead space. And this drop looks like it's actually going to deal with a lot of damage and maybe even pick off this command center. Yeah, it is. It's going to pick off this command center. That's actually an orbital, but you get the idea. That expansion is dead. Okay, that was a really good drop. Where is that scan? Okay, he's seeing how much is left behind here and why he can pick off. AC change sieging up. He's going to back up. He probably could have committed and picked that off. But he's just going to keep working on cutting off reinforcements. And then he's going to boost over here, and looks like he's going to try and deny this new third base, I guess, out of the opponent. All these units are really weak. These tanks are going to be able to siege up and pick them off, but he's going to force a cancel on this. Oh, he doesn't actually get the cancel because of big engagement moving forward here in the middle of the map. He's going to try and break this giant siege position, but his tank's sieging up pretty late. But here comes the fury of all those tanks, all those marines just flying everywhere. So much damage being done. And the tank count is very, very in the lead here for Obubu. Now he doesn't have a lot to buffer that right now, but he can just kind of roll in with siege tanks and kind of buffer the ta shots of the other tanks. He's going to need to leapfrog straight up towards the production because a lot of damage was done here behind it. Ooh, he's got to be careful. It looks like Gadget's going to be in a pretty... Pretty bad situation for holding this off. I think Obubu might be able to take this game. It's hard to tell though. This might actually even up the series. Pretty good stream of reinforcements coming across the map right now. Third base is up. Third and fourth technically are kind of up here for Gadget. His counterattacks worked really well, but uh, they're not stemming the tide of all these reinforcements now. Gadget has all of the vision over his opponent. He only has three siege tanks, though, compared to what? Like, oh my goodness, 17. 17 siege tanks versus now four. That's a really difficult position in Terran versus Terran. He's, he has all the positional advantage as far as, yes, the blue Terran, Gadget, has air control, so he can see everything that's going on, but he literally has so many tanks that it doesn't matter. He can lose one or two in the front, based on the vision, and then just scan and be able to take something out. Now it looks like Gadget's kind of going for some desperation here. He's going to try and move out and drop. Now over here at the left third base, that's not being sieged out, 
He has actually built a planetary, so that'll help against the Hellbats, but that's going to do nothing to this ridiculously large siege tank count. And that poor... I think that was a... No, was that a mule? Was that an SCV? I guess that was a mule. No, it was an SCV. It does get blown up. And now Obobo is just in the position that every Terran wants to be in in Terran vs. Terran. He's moved up. He's going to start sieging the production. When you get this choke right here, there's really not much the other player can do. They can't move down their ramp. They can't defend their natural. And GG is called. So, XT! Really coming back! They brought it back.